In this video, I want to talk about the conditions under which we can identify parameters in simultaneous equation frameworks. So in the last video, we spoke about a system whereby we had a supply equation which was given by, or Q is the quantity supplied, was equal to beta naught plus beta one times the price plus beta two times an exogenous variable Z. Actually, in this video, I'm gonna call this variable Z one here. And then we had some sort of exogenous error term, uh, epsilon one. Further, we also had a demand equation which was given by Q is equal to gamma naught plus gamma one times the price plus gamma two times Z two plus some error term epsilon two. And note that I've added another exogenous variable to this demand equation, which is in contrast to which we had that which we had in the last video. And we spoke about the fact that we could actually identify the parameter gamma one in the previous example because there was an exogenous variable Z one, which occurs in the first equation, which doesn't occur in the second equation. So we were actually able to use Z one as an IV for P and that would actually enable us to estimate the parameter gamma one. And similarly here, because I've actually added in this further variable Z2, we can actually use Z2 as an IV for P in the first equation, because Z2 is an exogenous variable which doesn't occur in the first equation, but does occur in the second equation. So under this sort of this setup we have here, we actually are okay to identify all parameters. And such that this is the case, we have a condition which um, is met in this circumstance, which is known as the rank condition. And the rank condition is the condition under which we can estimate all the parameters in our model. And all it says is in a general equation framework, there must be, for each particular equation, there must be at least as many exogenous variables which aren't included in that equation, which can act as IVs or sort of a list of IVs for each of the endogenous variables in that particular equation. Okay, so that's a lot just to sort of speak about, but we're gonna go through an example now and hopefully that will make everything a bit more clear. So let's say I have a simultaneous equation set up where I have some endogenous variable Y1 is equal to beta naught plus beta one times Y2, plus I have some exogenous variable Z1, some exogenous variable Z2, and I also have some exogenous variable Z3. So all three of those enter into my first equation, plus some error term epsilon one. And then my second equation here is y2 is equal to alpha naught plus alpha one times y1 plus alpha two times y3, which is a further endogenous variable. And then we have in our second equation, just gamma one times z1 plus gamma two times z4 plus some error term epsilon two. And then finally, our last of our simultaneous equations is gonna be y3 being equal to eta naught plus eta one times y1 plus eta two times z3 plus some error term epsilon three. Okay, so we've written down a lot of the equations. We now might be interested in whether we can actually estimate each of the parameters in each of the separate equations. Okay, so let's go through each of these equations in turn. So this first equation, the only endogenous variable we have in this first equation is y2. But we know that in order for us to estimate the parameter beta one, we need at least one exogenous variable for y2, or which isn't included in this first equation, to act as an IV for y2. And do we have it? Well, yes, we do, because we have z4, which is another exogenous variable which is found in the second equation. So Z4 in this exa example of the first equation can act as an IV for Y2 in the first equation. So it actually turns out that our first equation is fully identified. Okay, how about the second equation? Well, in the second equation, we've got the endogenous variables Y1 and Y3, and as well as having the exogenous variables Z1 and Z4. And we know that in order to estimate Y1 and y3, or the effect of y1 and y3, we need exogenous variables, which aren't included in this equation, to act as IVs for both y1 and y3. And can we do that? 
Yes, we can as well, because Z2 and Z3 can act as IVs for both of these two variables. Because Z1, oh sorry, Z2 and Z3 aren't included in this second equation. So this second equation is also identified. And finally, we've got the, the last equation whereby we've only got one endogenous explanatory variable y1 and we've only got one exogenous variable z3 so as you might have guessed we can fully identify equation 3 as well because we can use z1 z2 and z4 as instrument for y1 in this first equation and actually because we have more instruments than we actually have endogenous variables this last equation is actually over identified um, and if you remember back to our discussion of IV analysis, you can actually then go and test for the presence of over-identifying restrictions here to identify whether your exogenous variables are truly exogenous. So that's something which might be useful to do in this last equation. But for our purposes here, each of these equations is identified, which means that we can actually, we can actually estimate each of the parameters in each of these equations. So this condition actually has a name, for in the sort of general equation framework and it's known as the order condition. And the order condition says that in order for the each of the parameters in an equation to be identified, in other words, in order to be able to estimate them, we need exogenous variables or a list of exogenous variables which is at least as big as the list of endogenous variables within that particular equation. But importantly, those exogenous variables cannot be included in that equation. So that's the order condition, and it's this condition which determines whether we can estimate each of the parameters in simultaneous equation models.